so we come to tabulate whatever we have already studied fine so the first was the molecular solid and out of that the non polar so the first was molecular solid that was divided into three so first is non polar non polar then we have polar and then we have hydrogen bonded okay hydrogen bonded okay it is hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonded then we had come to after the molecular solids we had hmm ionic the ionic solids the ionic solids followed by that the metallic solids the metallic solids and followed by that we had the covalent or network solids the giant molecules right covalent or network solids right or network solids okay so what are the constituent particles of a molecular solid no prizes for guessing that obviously obviously molecules okay okay how about the ionic solids obviously the ions sorry sorry obviously the ions how about the metallic solids metallic solids positive ions in a sea of delocalized electrons is it not okay we have seen that in electricity the metallic solids are metallic because they are good conductors they are good conductors because they conduct electricity which means what they have, they have a cloud of electrons actually it is so much that is called a cloud of electrons okay and the slightest of the electric fields that we have already seen in the third chapter that even the slightest of the electric field starts moving them in a direction that is opposite to the move opposite to the in a direction that is in a direction that is opposite to the opposite to the direction of the electric field we have seen that hope you ho ho hope you remember if this is the direction of the electric field a negative charge has a force on this in this direction is it not why so idea any idea no no what is the force force is q e is it not what is q for an electron a negative number so this becomes scalar multiplication of a vector by a negative number it immediately flips the direction of the vector fine so it is this negative number that actually turns it in the opposite direction so so the force experienced will be always in the opposite direction fine so we say that it is it is it is positive ions hmm immersed immersed in a sea of electrons okay in a sea of electrons in a sea of electron clouds i'll say in a sea of electron cloud now now another thing that that should be very well understood to you and and that will be of some importance when we are doing the semiconductors the important thing about this is though it is negative though though we are saying that it is positive ions what is the net charge net charge is zero net charge is zero why is it zero 
because so say iron or copper that comes in that comes in with with all the atoms as neutral now what has happened suddenly due to the thermal energy what has happened the electrons they have been kicked out of the atoms and they are moving in a in a cloud sense so 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 that and here covalent or network solids they are made up of atoms which are linked together to form giant molecules that we have already seen okay now what are the attractive forces that are holding them the non polar ones no electrostatic forces okay so so uh, hope you have studied the fourth chapter in your you know what happened why is mali क्या प्रॉब्लम क्या है मुस्कुरा क्यों रहे हो तुम हाँ नहीं ऐसे ही का मतलब क्या और आप क्यों पलट पलट के देख रहे हो बार बार उसको कहा आपने वो तो मैं देखने के लिए नहीं बैठा हूं ना यहाँ पे So, what are the attractive forces in the non non polar molecules? You must have studied the fourth chapter in your fourth or fifth, I don't remember, in class eleventh, where where what had happened? We had studied about the London forces or the dispersion forces. What happens when the when the chains start becoming bigger and bigger? Suddenly, out of nowhere, due to some therm thermal imbalances, what happens? A part of the chain develops. some positive another part of the chain develops some negative same with other chains and they get attracted towards each other so they are they are small forces but still they are enough to hold things together that's the reason why why you must have seen the alkanes uh, up to 5 6 7 8 up to 9 are gases after that they become liquids after that they become solids the reason is the longer the chain more these dispersion forces and they start coming together so so they are basically dispersion or london forces dispersion or london forces what about the polar molecules so so this is for the first one what about the polar molecules why why are they attracted they are attracted due to due to the dipole dipole interaction okay so so we have seen that maybe there is a dipole like this plus and minus and there is another dipole like this plus and minus what is the tendency this positive will start getting attracted towards the negative one right and that's how they coalesce together so so it is dipole dipole interaction in the second dipole dipole interaction and again how about this obviously again no no prizes for guessing hmm what will that be mayank hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding how about ionic solids how about ionic solids what are the bonding forces the coulombic attraction because they they become an ion and then they come together fine uh, it's not to say that this does not have a coulombic attraction but the the field here is less than a point charge that that again you have been studying in physics is it not 
due to a positive and the negative close together the field that this forms here at a distance x is of the order of 1 upon x cube hope you remember a dipole forms a field of 1 upon x cube while a charge forms a, a normal charge a monopole forms a field that is 1 upon x square okay so which is higher which is more this is more fine so this is not to say that this is not coulombic attraction but dipole dipole interactions have got their fields that are one one degree less so here the order of uh, the degree here in the denominator is one more than this so we normally call this coulombic attraction coulombic electrostatic electrostatic attraction how about the metallic solids how about the metallic solids the metallic bondings that that uh, more about it you will study when you study the d group transition elements and then we'll see why they why they bond like that why they are such hard solids why because there are so many electrons coming out that 7 8 10 of them start getting bonded okay we know that octet rule get vi gets violated the moment you go into third period or more right so you might have something like pcl5 which has got 10 electrons around it okay or maybe maybe um, maybe the sulfur hexafluoride with 12 electrons around it okay so the expanded octet and that that actually makes it so hard so there we have a have the metallic bonding and here I have covalent bonding in the covalent networks again again the thing is there now this covalent bonding hmm, this covalent bonding leads to two two absolutely opposite kind of things no the diamond is also covalently bonded and the graphite is also covalently bonded with with absolutely diametrically opposite characteristics one is used as a lubricant another is the hardest metal sorry hardest solid known right so much so that we use it for drilling the rocks and cutting iron and and if you have been observant enough have you seen uh, how a glass cutter cuts glasses hmm? they have got a knife that is diamond tipped don't think that it is kind of a five carat king diamond with which he cuts the tip is iron it is laced with it is it is actually uh, impregnated with diamond okay it's not as if uh, he takes a diamond ring and cuts it with that no they're diamond tipped tools so that is covalent bonding how about examples of non-polar solids non-polar solids Hmm. Many times you will have to remember them. So, argon, hmm? argon, CCL4, these things will become important. Argon, why should argon be there? Hmm? We have heard that this is a noble gas and does not form a bond after all. Hmm? But does it? Yes, it does. Hmm? HE2 molecules are known to exist okay by way of these dispersion forces also also so many when we read the group 18 elements hmm, p block then we'll find when we come to the noble gases there are so many other compounds of the noble gases that are actually existing and that was one of the reasons why the lewis dot structure got such a sound bashing right because it was based on based on the inertness of the noble gas and we later come to know that noble gases are not so inert as we as we expect them to be or think them to be so they are actually they are actually uh, involved in forming compounds so argon ccl4 ccl4 is also a non polar thing and many a times when we are doing our organic reactions we'll be using this as the medium where when when we need a non polar 
when we need a when we need need an uncharged medium then we normally put ccl4 okay so so hold that in mind like that then we have h2 i2 co2 fine h2 is also non polar why for the simple reason that both are the same molecules they have the same kind of pull on the electrons none takes more none gives more fine so there is a perfect balance co2 co2 is also one such though there is slight kind of dipole that does come into play now the polar molecules are formed of some very highly electronegative and some some less electronegative kind of thing here here in the tug of war both are of equal strength now if i set up a tug of war between two people who are not equal in strength in pulling the electrons towards them for example chlorine and hydrogen chlorine is highly highly electronegative or 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 if i want more i can set up a set up the most electronegative what is that chlorine hmm what is the what is the what is the electronegativity number according to according to pauling scale how much number is given to fluorine idea no fluorine is given a number of 4 okay there are so many scales that are in use but i am i am talking about this scale that is most widely used so that's given a number of 4 the highest electronegative so here i have hcl also so2 fine when we see the structure we'll we'll find why and one of the most important hydrogen bonded at, as we had discussed was h2o okay so i've shown you what happens in an h2o this is more electronegative so this pulls an electron so there is delta negative this is delta positive this is delta positive this is again this pulls and and what happens the the another molecule of water that comes in here is gets bonded to this like this and here it gets bonded to this and the chain continues and that is the reason that is the reason that ethanol that has that has a molecular mass somewhere around your water that has that has its boiling point equal to somewhere in the range of 60 degree centigrade while in our case the water boils at 100 degree centigrade it is nothing but the hydrogen bonding that is responsible for that so h2o how about ionic solids one of the most famous hmm common salt nacl nacl is not nacl is an ionic solid that we have been studying since class 9 so how na gives you being electropositive it sheds one electron cl accepts that electron they first become ions then they come together to form one molecule then the molecules come together to form the whole solid matrix right hmm and uh, um you must have seen one thing i do not know how much you remember what happens when the molecules come the ionization energy of the sodium is more than the electron gain enthalpy of chlorine do you understand what i am trying to say what i am trying to say is the amount of energy required to make sodium a a cation a cation is more than the amount of energy that is released when chlorine becomes an anion are you getting the point so what happens what happens that the it, that the energy required for making an na plus cl minus molecule is is positive and whenever the energy is positive we have been studying gravitation we have been studying the atoms and the molecules we know that whenever the net energy is positive the system is unstable 
then can you tell me how NaCl 